how do you grow in a time when it seems like nobody cares about photos and photography content? Do you need to post video content? Do you need to post every single day? Do you need to post seven or even 10 times a day? Today I'm downtown Toronto and one of my good friends is here who has built himself from the ground up an audience of over one million people, one million followers, and has over a billion views within the last year. Did I, uh, did I, did I get that right? One million followers, a billion views? Billion views. Billion views. But before we get to that, the first tip for building yourself an audience that cares about your content is to just be yourself and include your personality in everything you do. Because you can try to copy someone else, you can try to do what someone else is doing, but the only thing that will really differentiate you from being you is your personality. Jared thinks that my videos are too good. Too good. Focusing too much on quality and he's not pumping out enough content. The perfectionist inside of me is just screaming. And hold on, who else do we have here today? Will, come here. Yeah. Will is focusing a little bit too much on what everyone else is doing. And he's gotta pump out a ton of content that's his own. 10 times a day. 10 times a day. As Ten. many times as he can physically post in his day, he should be posting to catch up. It's gonna get started. Get going, Will. <laughs> Crazy. So the secret is the algorithm right now shows your content always to people that don't follow you. It's about 90% to people that don't follow you. That's so the right. more you post, the more people are gonna see your content, the more you're gonna grow. When you really break it down, your core audience is gonna love your content no matter what. This goes along with another tip I have, which is that there are two types of content you can make. The first is kind of that viral content that gets the attention, that grabs the new people and brings them in. I'm gonna use a, a shepherding analogy here. It makes them a part of your flock. You want to nurture the flock, but you also want to grow the flock. And so sometimes the video content that you make needs to appeal to your existing audience. But sometimes you do need to put a little bit of something extra, something that just makes your video just a little bit special to grab the attention and maybe just get more sheep inside of your flock, if that makes sense. These streets are just absolutely so noisy right now. Jared says I shouldn't worry Don't about worry it. worry about it. The perfectionist inside of me. Toronto's noisy, that's authentic. Here's my thought. You have the two types of content. One being that like really polished, really good. But with TikTok in short form, I've kind of now thought I also need to make content that is less polished. Like let's say I put out three unpolished pieces of content that just are informational and help the average person. And then you have that one piece of content for every other three pieces of content that is a little bit higher production and will maybe bring in the new people. When I started on TikTok, quality was what I did. I spent 40 hours on edit. And they did good. They and did they, good. And they will continue to, to do good, but if it's your handicap, that doesn't allow you to make more content, then you just need to throw all those rules out the window and just kind of like guerrilla style run and gun. I didn't grow. The trick, the secret for me was to produce quality and quantity, both at the same time. And when you bring them together, that's like, that's the secret sauce. And with the quality, I'm not talking about it being super polished. Right. I'm talking about it offering value, appealing to your niche, appealing to your audience. What matters is how I tell the story to my end result. That's it. That's the quality. The value of the information that you're sharing exactly. is like a high value piece of information. If it's if it's fluff, it's gonna flop. If it's fluff, it's gonna flop. That's gonna be my new Instagram bio. talk a little bit about being consistent, but not in the way that people traditionally talk about being consistent. There is a point of diminishing returns. When you're learning something new, you put a lot of effort in at the beginning and you, you can learn really fast. There's this inner desire in us to keep getting better, but at a certain point, we kind of hit this point of diminishing returns where the amount of effort we put in 
only re yields so much more of a result. So what you have to start doing is learning how to use the knowledge you actually have to make a piece of content. We gotta go? Let's go to the street, I guess. So we got kicked out of that location, but the point I was making was that we tend to learn a lot and then feel like, well, we need to keep learning in order to kind of like validate the fact that we, we, we know a lot before we actually make anything. The biggest point that gets to a lot of creators is they feel like they don't know enough to be able to make a piece of content, but really, you only need to know this much in order to be able to make this much. Will's just filming me back there. Jared, I know you talked a little bit about being consistent. What would you say is important about being consistent? Like, do you need to post every single day? Can you post every other day? Like, what's, what's the method to the madness? Posting every day is the absolute minimum. I want to get into a routine where I post once a day no matter what. But if I could, if I had the time, if I had the resources, I would post somewhere between five and ten times a day. And I have no issue. Some days I'll post five reels, some days I'll post six TikToks. I don't have any concern with doing that, but I have to post once a day. Once a day as a minimum is just, it's just a really good starting point because you'll get the reps in and you'll kind of just learn how the whole process works. One thing I absolutely hate is you get this advice that's like, you know, use these hashtags or write longer captions no. or like there's some instant hack that will guarantee there is no shortcut if you scroll back a thousand videos that i've made my first 60 videos got no more than 2,000 views then all of a sudden one popped and then another one then you're just trying to gather an audience with what the algorithm produces today and then everything just it's like magic and then you'll just the magic happens the magic like happens As a photographer, one thing that can differentiate your content is making better content or having a competitive advantage. If you have something that makes you unique, maybe you have access to a sports team and can shoot behind the scenes content, or you're going to a location in the middle of the Arctic or at the top of a mountain that no one has ever been to before. Jared, I know you kind of make content in a way that's different from other people. What would you say is your competitive advantage? I've been able to get over the perfectionism and not plan content so I can make more. I live in Victoria, so I don't get any snow. So you can shoot all year long yeah. and you're not afraid really to make mistakes. I create and correct. So I make as much as humanly possible within my resources and time and then learn from it. But after it's posted, that's it, it's Done. gone. You don't think about Never it, you think don't stress about, it, about it, you don't worry, was the lighting bad, was the nope. coloring bad? You read the comments, you learn from the comments, and then you move on to the next one. The comments can be very unforgiving, but just throw that out the window. Who cares? Move on to the next thing. Done. That's what you gotta do. Jared, what's that you just pulled out of your pocket there? This is phone two of three, because you, when one battery runs out, you need another phone. Okay, so, while a normal person would just bring a charger, Jared just has like three phones with him. Above all, if you wanna make content that gets seen, that goes viral, you need to make content that has people in mind first. One of the biggest things that we get told is to make content that you're passionate about or niche down to something that's uber specific. The problem is that if you're making content that is selfish, that is for yourself, what reason does someone else have to care about it? What reason do they have to leave a comment or to share that piece of content that you've created. Any thoughts about that? This side. This side? <laughs> this side. For me, it was always about looking, making what I love, but then also making sure that at least 40% of the audience was watching the entire video. If I hit 40%, I knew that's what my audience was looking for. There's really this feedback loop of make the content, learn from the content, then make the content again. And I think that's exactly what Jared is talking about. Create and correct. I'm a Sony fanboy. This is a 7 IV 35 millimeter G Master. I love these guys. They are so great. 
If you want views, if you want attention, if you want to build your photography or go viral, you have to do things different. The days of just posting a photo are gone. So don't be afraid to think outside the box. Just just a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.